Hey cruisers, here are 10 money saving hacks for you. Let's get started. Here we go, money talk. Number one is to cruise off season. Now I know this might be difficult for some with school or work, but if you can take the kids out of school for like five to seven days, depending on how long your cruise is, or if you have dependable, trustworthy childcare, and maybe can even leave the kids with someone else and go on your own, that's a money savings. Now, again, these are options for you. You don't have to cruise without your kids, but if you are trying to save money, cruising off season is a good idea. Cruise lines will drop prices when demand is lower. Typically, that's right before or after a national holiday or before U.S. schools are out for the summer or they have just started back in the fall. Also, for Alaska cruises, the cruising season begins in May and lasts through September. So the warmer summer months are peak season and prices are highest at that point in time. May and September are known as the shoulder seasons. The climate is generally colder, so fewer people cruise and prices are down during those shoulder seasons. So take advantage of cruising what the cruise line considers off season and save some money. Number two, opt for a shorter cruise than a seven night or longer. I only recommend the three or four nighters for those who have already fallen in love with cruising. If you're having cruise withdrawals and you're a veteran cruiser and your budget is kind of tight, then go get you a three to four night cruise. It's an amazing way to save some money. For newbies, however, in my opinion, three to four nights it just isn't really long enough to get the feel of a ship or a cruise line. By the time you board, you really have one day to enjoy the ocean and the ship and then you're off the ship again. So I, I kind of call that misery. So I would say that this hack is, for, is more for veteran cruisers who already love cruising, know what it's about, know the cruise line they love and can get a shorter cruise to save money. Number three, be flexible in your choice of cruise line. If you are immovably loyal to one cruise line, you might be leaving money on the table, as they say, um, especially if you're fairly new to cruising and not yet experiencing any of the VIP perks that come from a particular cruise line. It's a perfect time to take advantage of great sales that different lines might be offering. And don't assume that one line is always going to be less expensive than the other lines. That's also a reason that a good travel agent comes in handy as they can watch all the sales for you across the lines of all the cruise lines as opposed to you constantly having to be on your computer 24 7 and watch all the different sales and boards and cruise lines and going every day to check it get your good um, travel agent and tell them what you want and they can watch for the sales if you're willing to cruise any of the cruise lines number four be flexible on cruise ship choice. You know, sometimes the little guys get the end of the run. <laughs> the larger and newer ships are great fun, lots of things to do, but they are more expensive. If you're new to cruising and you really don't have a lot to compare it to, take advantage of a great deal on a mid to small size ship. If you're a veteran cruiser and you honestly just love cruising, be sure and check out the smaller ships for some really great savings. Number five, be flexible on your cruise cabin choice. And that is exactly what it means. If you really want to cruise, an inside cabin gives you access to all the same food, shows, venues, activities, everything as booking a suite does and yet you're not paying two to three times the amount. We've stayed in everything from a junior suite to an inside cabin. We personally love a balcony, but the experience on the ship, everything that you go and do and see and hear is all the same. And lots of folks often say they're only in their cabin anyway to sleep and shower. So some spend a lot of time on their balcony if they're like us and they really love having a balcony cabin. And what you do is you just save over time so that you can pay 
for the size cabin that matters to you. And of course, there are those who require the amenities of a larger cabin, like a bathtub, which only comes with a junior suite or above. But if you are able, a lower cabin category can really help you suck away cash to spend on other parts of your cruise vacation. Number six, use a travel agent. This is one of my favorite hacks. If your schedule is flexible, ask your travel agent about the least expensive time to cruise. Any travel agent who is cruise certified, and that means something, so be sure and ask them if they are, they will know when the best and least expensive time is to cruise. Be sure you tell them if you have a preference for a cruise line and a cabin type, and then be sure and share your budget and ask your travel agent to keep an eye out for the great sales. Using a travel agent is free, 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 free. So be sure you find a good one and take advantage of their skills. Number seven, if you are doing it yourself, take the time to research. Yes, it takes time, but you have to do the work if you want a good deal. That's what this video is about, saving money. Check online with the travel companies like vacations to go cruise.com, iCruise.com, Expedia, there are lots of them, as well as go on the Cruise Lines website itself. If you have a travel website that you really like to use, be sure and put it down in the comments below and share with all of us. Please remember if you are doing this yourself that there are limitations for those large conglomerate travel agencies. And I'll just give you a personal experience because during the COVID shutdown, when we had several cruises canceled, I went through a lot to try to get a hold of one of those, <laughs> one of them I just mentioned, and I won't say who because they do give good prices, but it was like an act of Congress to get someone on the phone to answer a question because their offices shut down when and if the world shuts down. If you use an independent travel agent, like I talked about earlier, they can work from anywhere. They can work from their home or their car or wherever they're shut up if the world shuts down. So be sure that if you're doing it yourself, however, that you look on all of those websites and make sure and compare as well as look at the time of the season like we talked about earlier to get the best price. If you choose to do the research yourself, don't forget that all of those websites we talked about will allow you to do a mock booking and see what the out the door price will be. And I specifically mentioned that term out the door price because if you are only looking at what the cruise itself will cost, you will probably get sticker shock when you see the final price. Don't forget, you need to include travel insurance. Um, that's really non-negotiable. I mean, in my opinion, if someone in your party gets called into work pre-cruise and they don't have a choice, if one of you has a medical emergency, it could be a weather delay and you maybe miss your flight going home. Lots of reasons why travel insurance is very important. But remember, you have to add that to the cost of the cruise along with prepaid gratuities and taxes and fees. I can generally add in my head 300 to 400 dollars to whatever the cruise fare is shown online and come pretty close to the final out the door price number eight be sure that you take advantage of cruise line discount programs most of the cruise lines will offer discounts for of course their vip programs that they have but along with geographic location and category discounts, I'll call it that, and I'll tell you what I'm talking about. Most of them offer discounts for the state that you live in, your age, sometimes your occupation, and maybe if you're a veteran or a first responder. So be sure that you select those when you're doing that mock booking and be sure you tell your travel agent about the categories that apply to you because those VIP programs can come in handy to take the price down on your cruise. Number nine, evaluate whether dining, drink, and Wi-Fi packages are really worth it for you. I know some of you may not like this one, but we are talking about money saving hacks. So let's get down to the brass tacks. Dining, there are a lot of dining options on the larger ships these days, but it is a ship by ship basis. Generally, the included options on a cruise are anywhere from good 
all the way to amazing. If you're on a smaller ship that doesn't have as many specialty restaurants, consider that a dining package really might not be worth it. That might be one of those cruises that you just really enjoy everything on the menu in the main dining room, the MDR, and in the buffet, and any of the other snack places on board that are free. Consider saving those funds that a dining package would go towards to a larger ship with more restaurant options. So, drink package. Be sure and consider, one, how many days you're going to be off the ship in port and for how long. You certainly want to reconsider buying a package if you have four ports in one week and you're going to be in port until late at night because you don't want to be paying for drinks on board when you'll actually be in port. Number two, how many drinks you will actually drink on board per day. Are you the kind who seriously has a drink in their hand? 24 seven all the time, or are you just a kind of here and there drinker? So make sure you consider that. And lastly, what kind of drinks do you prefer? Are you a beer drinker? Because beer is generally around $8, or do you prefer mixed drinks or like cocktails? Those can be up to $13 or even more. Let me tell you, the best drink calculator I've ever come across is on cruisely.com and I'm not getting paid for this recommendation. I really think this is a great calculator. I will link it down below. Again, it's on cruisely, C-R-U-Z-E-L-Y.com. Now about Wi-Fi, you need to stop and consider if you are literally able to unplug while on your cruise. I know, we all think we literally can't, but some of us can't. If you do not require the internet for work, or business, or to keep in touch with sick family members or young children or some kind of security issue at home, you really probably can get by with unplugging for the length of your cruise. Remember also, depending on your cell phone plan, you might have service in some, if not all, of your ports. So be sure and check before you spend any extra money on a Wi-Fi package, if you might have enough to get you through your cruise. And number 10, bring everything you need with you or wait and buy it in port. Things are expensive on a cruise ship. Carry things with you like a small first aid kit, extra days of meds, and a small sewing kit. I have a really good video on 25 essential cruise things to take with you and I'll link it right up here in the card and it will tell you those little things that you think you might not need and that you don't need every single cruise but if you end up needing them and have to buy them on the cruise ship your wallet is going to regret it. You can also bring a certain amount of wine or champagne on most cruise lines. Some lines are two bottles and some are one so make sure you check your cruise line website and get those bottles in your carry-on bag. And if you're a new cruiser and just full of questions, check out this video here for the top 20 questions for new cruisers. Be blessed.